What is up guys, Goodzilla here and today I'm going to be showing you my Clay Hedora model. So here's the story behind this. I was watching a show on TV last Tuesday, one week ago, and I'm sitting there thinking, how cool would it be if I made a clay Hedora? Shouldn't be too hard. It's just a pile of crud. So the show ended and I got to work went and got some clay, some acrylic paint so I could mix it with water. I suppose I'll go ahead and show you a slideshow. I was going to make a time lapse but that just kind of failed. I didn't have the motivation to get the camera out every time I wanted to work. So this will have to do a slideshow. So as you can see uh, here I am gluing on a cardboard tube to a newspaper <laughs> you may be wondering what does this do for your model well it's very simple all it did was make the base for my model like it gave me something to mold the clay onto so that was pretty helpful I started out with that and I just started putting on clay once I got to the top well, about halfway through my camera died, so I didn't actually get anything of that. But yes, that's basically what happened. I just started stacking on clay, sort of molding it with my hands to be shaped like Hedora. I uh, made little lines on the front and sides so I could sculpt some legs. That turned out pretty well. I'm wishing I would have gone a little farther with that, but that's all right. I uh, shaped the head sort of like the Bandai Creation, sort of box-shaped, lopsided, you know. Also, I put on the egg sac during this first step. You can't forget the egg sac. <coughs> <coughs> Bandai Creation. <coughs> Excuse me. Since the only figure I had was a Bandai Creation, I didn't really know how I was going to sculpt that. So I winged it, and I think it turned out pretty well. Also during this step, I added detail. So what I did was I basically just took one of my sculpting tools, stabbed into the figure or model, and dragged down. What I could have done was added a bunch of different like little strings of clay on because that's what Hedora kind of looks like, just a bunch of slime dripping down. But that would have been too hard, so I just sort of recreated that effect by making indentations and crevices instead. And it turned out pretty well. It looked a little better after I painted it too. So... I got as far as the main body structure and the egg sac and the head until I ran out of clay so I just had to make do with that for the time being. I also etched in some eyes and on the top of the head I did what most other Hedora figures did and I put a bunch of little cracks. So that looked pretty good I went a little overboard with those cracks but whatever that was about it for that step so it was time for me to go ahead and pop it into the oven I baked it at 275 degrees for about 45 minutes and then so it could have a gradual cool down and it wouldn't be so brittle when I took it out I um baked it more at about 200 degrees and then a little bit more at about 150 and then I took it out so it had a nice gradual cool down it wouldn't break that easily and that was a good choice on my part so then I moved on to painting 
Um, the painting was very basic, basically. <laughs> um, I coated it all except for the head, which I... For the head, I used a silver acrylic paint, but for the rest of the body, I coated it with a sort of dark, um, sort of murky gray paint for the base color. And then I added a less heavy layer of silver paint so it could kind of look shiny, wet, slimy like Hedora is. And then finally, well not finally, but just like the Banai Creation figure, I added lots of green and red highlights all over the body just to make it, you know, stand out a little more. On the top of the head, on those cracks, I put a light coat of green paint. If I haven't already mentioned this, I painted the head plain silver. The eyes were somewhat complicated. Well, I already mentioned I etched them out while I was detailing. So what I did was I painted the entire eye red, and then I painted a black circle in it, and then a smaller gold circle in that, and then put a black dot in that. So that's how I got the eyes to look near good. <laughs> And also on the inside of the eyes, I added these extra crest things, like in between the eyes, because that's what Hedora looks like. And I think those turned out pretty well. And then to finally top off the paint job, what I did was I just took some black paint and I lightly brushed around the entire thing. I didn't want to get too deep into the cracks, but only on the, like the peaks of the detail so it would stand out. It's sort of like the airbrush technique that X plus uses with their figures that's sort of what I did to make it have depth so once I was done with that it was time to go get some more clay so I did that and got right back to work on the arms and tail for the arms I started by sort of making a tongue shaped thing that's the best way I can describe it and then squeezed little tentacles out of the side and also added some little tentacles to it and I know they're not tentacles but that's the way I'm gonna describe them so it looks like you know stuff is dripping off the arms and then I also added those little lines with my sculpting tools that I mentioned earlier so it you know just looked better on the top of the arms now as far as gluing those onto the body I wasn't sure what I was gonna do before I baked them, I decided it would be a good idea to press the arms onto the body so they could assume the shape of the body, you know, where they connect. So it'd be a better job for gluing. But unfortunately, once I finished baking, the arms had not kept the shape of the body. So what I had to do was end up breaking different parts of the arms off so they would fit on the body. And even then it didn't look correct because there were still lots of sharp um, pieces of clay sticking out. So what I did to fix that, and by the way, I glued the arms and tail on with gel super glue. But anyway, so to fill in the gaps between the arm and the body, because like I said it didn't fit correctly, and it didn't fit snug so to fill in the gaps I used this wood filler so I squirted the wood filler in there let it dry you're supposed to sand it but I didn't and I painted over it with the same technique I've been using and it looks pretty good um, it would have been good if I sanded it like I said because it looks kinda rough as you can see but it overall came out well uh, then I just used the same painting techniques I've been using on the arms so they match the body. And on the underside of the arms, I added that um, yellow paint job, like on the Bandai figure, and also some black around the yellow to just make it look a little more organic. Then on to the tail. There isn't too much to say there. You can guess how that went. I just sculpted this thing, pulled out a tail shape, pressed it onto the body like I did with the arms, pulled it off, and I baked it. 
Also, I use my detail technique with just making crevices. So I glued that on, and that also didn't quite fit right. But I just glued that one on anyway. It There was enough surface area between the two connecting that it was able to stay. And I just filled in the holes with wood filler. I use the same painting technique on most of the tail except for the top of the actual tail itself where I use my silver and red solution just like on the Bandai Creation figure. So that's how the tail turned out. That's basically the entirety of the figure. Uh, the tentacle slime things have broken off of the arms quite a few times actually. In fact, one broke off in the making of this video. So, I'm going to have to be really careful with this guy. Clay is delicate. I'm overall really happy with the way it turned out. One thing I w would have changed was I wish the arms were thicker because they're really kind of thin from the side view. They only really look good from the front. <coughs> Then also, I wish he would have been hunched over a little more, like the Bandai figure. But this is okay, too. And if I had to make one more change, I would have put the arms up a little further on the body. That doesn't bother me too much, because they're not too far from where they should be. I guess I'll do a size comparison, just because. Here's the Bandai creation, Hedora. It's just a little bit taller. So uh, put that there. I'll compare it to a figure that a lot of you probably have. Let's do uh, Bandai Creation Godzilla 2000. Those look pretty good together. Huh. Yeah. Almost. One other thing about this model is that he's uh, heavy because it's almost entirely clay except for this hollow spot here which actually still has newspaper glued onto it but inside of there is hollow and the cardboard tube is in there also I forgot to mention this in the slideshow but he has little uh, feet I guess there I'm not sure if I'm gonna display him with my collection or not I might just put him to the side if I do end up making more models, then yeah, I'll probably have a completely different place to put those. Next one would probably be a Godzilla, even if I do, if I even do get to that. So, that's gonna wrap this up. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't enjoy this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Tell me in the comments what you think of this guy, because personally I like him, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts. So put that in the comments. Be sure to comment. I just said that. Be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys on my next video. On the top of the head. On those cracks. I... Also... I just broke it.